Hey guys, welcome back to Heiko Shaves. I just filmed a shave last night, but I'm so excited. One of my channel supporters, JR, he sent me a box full of goodies. Um, he sent me two really incredible razors on loan so that I can try them out and review them for you guys. Um, and those two razors are now sitting here next to me and I'm really debating which one to review first. So uh, let the cat out of the bag, Heiko. So the, the first one that he sent me is a Rex supply company, Rex console, which is the slant cousin of the Rex ambassador that we re uh, reviewed a few months ago. Here's the Rex console. It's a slight slant razor. It's not like a really aggressive slant on there. And in accordance to Matt Pesarsik of uh, Rex supply company and razor emporium, the Console is actually the milder of the two. So if you would compare the adjustable Rex console and the Rex Ambassador, you would find that this one is the more gentle, um, apparently because of the slant that the blade engages the stubbles differently and that it is more efficient while being a little milder. The scalloping here on the on the handle is different than on the Rex Ambassador, but overall the design is the same, you know, typical kind of a two-piece. You know, just the same. The top cap, of course, is different from the one on the Rex Ambassador, but the way to assemble it and also the way to adjust it, that um, here in this case, the the close comb goes up and down when you when you turn the adjuster. So we started at a one and it goes to a six. You can see here, let me do that again. So this is closed at one, and then this is all the way open at six. So I have this one. And then the second one that he sent uh, sent over to me just on loan you know i cannot keep them uh, that's why i kind of want to get the reviews done quickly so i can send the stuff back to him and so he can continue using his own razors it, it was so incredible that jr just said you know what i just ordered this one um you know as soon as i've tried it out i'll pack it up and send it to you and then at the same time he's like oh i sent you a rex console as well I, i'm like totally blown away you know i mean this is some support i really appreciate you thank you so the second one, um, you might recognize this box. We just recently reviewed the Rex Ultima, which is the stainless steel adjustable that they made. So they came out with a final cut, right? And there were a few different variations of this one. And that was like a $28 razor. And then they came out with a brass, which I don't have. Guess what is in this box here? It's the Yaki adjustable in brass. So he has it all in the original packaging and I will of course send it back to him like that as well. So here is now, let's put this all safely over here. Here is now the Yaki Ultima in brass. Is it actually called the Yaki Ultima? You know, again, box but no name on it. But yeah, let's just go with that. So this, the final cut right here, which is a zinc alloy relatively cheaply made there is no cnc machining going on this is all cast um, and then we have the brass version which uh, which came out next which is a close comb straight close comb uh, fully adjustable very similar in appearance to you know the rex ambassador if you look at the bits and pieces you can definitely see some inspiration there you know and then also this very interesting scalloping here it's not very aggressive but i bet it does a great job and this is all brass I don't know if this is coated in some shape or form to keep it from, you know, brass is not a uh, precious metal, so it will eventually tarnish and discolor, but um, it doesn't look like it, there's nothing going on at the moment. So maybe this is treated in some shape or form or coated in some shape or form. But yeah, straight, straight, uh, uh, close comb, no slant, fully adjustable, one through six, uh, pretty much just like we saw on the Rex here. Okay, let me put those two now one down and grab the next one The Ultima just so you can get a kind of a comparison. It's a little longer than the Ultima and um, I don't know if you guys remember when we reviewed this one here. I shaved with it on it at a number one No, we're actually all open right now. So we shaved with it at a number one and I found this to be quite up there in aggression even in setting one so um you know, my 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 conclusion was this: this is shavable, even for someone who's looking for a gentle shave. But uh, it is a little high up there, so starting out at a aggression level that is a little too high for my comfort zone. So 
number one, it's already pretty aggressive. The, the final cut here, on the other hand, um, at setting number one was actually relatively gentle. It's not the mildest of the mild, but it was relatively gentle. Then, then the Ultima came about here and we tried that out and it just had a little bit more blade exposure and it was a little, you know, kind of awe inspiring. You had to be a little bit more careful. And the only one that I didn't get to try out because I didn't buy it was this brass version, which came out between the final cut and the Ultima stainless steel. So this was their first venturing into the CNC razor market. And, um, here, let me just. Since we have it here all open next to each other, um, I mean, you you can tell that there is, you know, someone is copying someone, and I would say probably Yaki taking some ins inspiration from Rex Supply Company, or maybe even the the French Gibbs razor that everyone is always referring to, even though that has a, had a plastic handle or like a Bakelite handle, if I'm not completely mistaken. But they are all fairly similar to each other. Um, Home-like, I think, the Russian version, the uh, Tundra? No, Taiga, that's what it is. Taiga is, is like a, a region or like a, a topographical categorization. So there's the Tundra and the Taiga and the whatnot back in elementary school. I, I don't remember the details, but yeah, so there, there would be the Russian version that would be competing with this market here as well. You know, we have the Flex over there, the Flexi. Um, and oh yeah, the T2 is sitting there. So kind of debating what I want to review for you guys today. We're already seven minutes into it. Um, but since I really ultimately want to figure out how those three, uh, line up with each other. So final cut, the brass Ultima and the stainless steel Ultima, um, how they line up with each other. I don't even know if this is called the Ultima. Forgive me. My unpreparedness is unbelievable. Today I'm going to do a first shave with this. And as soon as I have recovered, I will eventually just put blades in here and with you guys just do a couple strokes with each to see how they line up with each other. You know, putting them all at number one and see which one is the most aggressive, which one is in the middle and which one is the mildest so that you can make up your mind which one of these here, you know, $28, $30, $120, I think, and $140 or so. Uh, don't quote me on it. Just I'll put some links down below. So I think we're going to start with this one here. Um, I'll pause real quick, put some pre-shave on, get all my water filled here and get everything ready. And then I will be right back with you. And I will put a Wilkinson sword blade in here. So you don't need to see that either. It is just like on the Rex Ambassador. You take the top out, put the blade on here, or you can put the blade on here and then you know, do do it this way. I always just put a drop of water in between that kind of holds the blade in, in place. And then um, there are no alignment marks that you have to follow. So there is no little tick mark here on the side or like a pointer, nothing. You just put it on there. Oh yeah, by the way, before I forget, um, nicely laser engraved there, DLC Yaki, it says right there. And this thing also has a serial number. So I guess they can track what, what year it was made, this one here. It's really small, but I still have 2020 vision. It's Y337. I don't know. 337. Can't say what it what it could mean, but um, this is what it is. There's nothing else engraved. But yeah, the handle feels really nice. This material feels really nice. All right, let me get prepped, and then we're gonna get right into the shave. Okay. Five minutes later. All right, guys. So. Uh, Prasso green pre-shave in my face. We got a, oh, and on my nose too. And we got some Wilkinson sword blade already installed. Now let's take a critical look at uh, the blade alignment here. You know, remember the disaster with the Pearl Flexi, how the whole top cap or like the bottom actually, the, the close comb was kind of kitty wampus. But I don't know if this comes out here in this video, 1080p video quality. Uh, it looks really straight. So this is at number one. That's easy when it's really closed up. So I'm going to open it up to number six. Well, it actually goes past six. It goes to seven and a half. And now we just have to look if the close comb aligns with the blade. You know, my, 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 my gauge in my eye tells me it's straight. And we're never going to get to a six, or I don't think we're going to get to a six. Who knows? Maybe this is going to be like the surprising mild razor. I've mentioned that before. 
a lot of the adjustables have the problem that they either start too mild, that the first setting one and two and three maybe is barely shaving at all. There's barely any blade engagement because it's so mild and you have to crank it up to three or four before something actually starts happening. Or they already start up at a relatively, you know, let's call it efficient setting. So it's already kind of at the edge of comfortable. Um, and then they go really to like, you know, monster, monster aggression kind of deal. And the Rex Ambassador was a little towards the more aggressive starting point. Um, people always ask me about the Progress. The Progress is one of those really old designs that has been around the block for, you know, a couple of decades, uh, since actually 1955. And that actually does a really good job starting at a relatively mild, but not like not inefficient. So you can set it to one and then start shaving and it's great. And apparently the Parker variant, which is like a clone of this, does a pretty good job as well. I haven't tried that one yet, so um, don't hold me to it. Don't quote me. Um, but yeah, so they got that relatively dialed in. And also the old Gillette uh, Slim, the Fat Boy, the Super Adjustables, they all got it relatively nicely dialed in that you could start at a one and you actually have some shaving action going on. But if it's not aggressive or efficient enough, you could go up from there. But you could get a smooth shave out of out of it if uh, you just set it at one. And this is what I'm trying to do. I wanna see, is this mild enough to be comfortable for a daily shave, like six o'clock in the morning, foggy brain kind of, you know, without cutting your face off? Or does it already start out too aggressive for, you know, my taste? It's all subjective, of course. And then maybe it is so mild that we have to crank it up to three before something happens. So we have a blade in here, we have pre-shave in my face, my synthetic DS Cosmetic. It's, it's really one of my favorite brushes. That's why when I broke my first one, it fell down and the handle broke. Um, I, I bought it again because it has a nice long handle. I don't constantly get my fingers in the lather. And the synthetic bristles they use, they are soft to the touch, but they are stiff enough to get some lathering going. We're going to use my good old Parasso Green. You know, one of my policies is if I review a new razor, I'm going to go with products that work for me. Uh, Pre-shave Parasso Green. Now, Parasso Green Soap. You know, I'm, I'm always just loading the, the brush. I don't really lather in here. I don't put blooming water in there. I don't do any of this stuff, which probably is a mistake. Um, I just recently had a little bit of a, you know, not so great working lather, and that was probably my fault. It was definitely my fault. So now we have soap on here. Emesis Basin has fresh water in it. Dip, dip, dip. And with this soap, I, I just got it, you know, dialed in so that I can produce a good lather. And the new razor has a good starting point. It has a, a fair chance to impress because the soap works so well, at least on my face. You know, your mileage may vary. Maybe you don't like Parasso at all. It's an Italian product. Invented by Italian barbers. For generations they worked on it. I'm just making that up. Um, but yeah, it's an Italian product. Even though you can buy it on Amazon, I think it's still, they still take pride in it. I, it's, it's not one of those artisan little small soap shops for sure. Because I mean... Parasso has had and still has quite a presence on the market. And it's kind of like the, you know, the supermarket. No, you can't buy it in a supermarket. That's what I'm, that's not what I'm saying. But comparing a artisan shop to Parasso is kind of comparing a tiny little outfit to a big manufacturer. They sell this stuff worldwide and through Amazon and you know, they have quite a presence. But I do like it and it works and as you can see, I can easily whip up a lather with not much effort at all. And it's good to my skin, I don't get any irritations out of it. All right, so we lathered, everything ready to go, blade is in here, we're set to number one. It actually doesn't even quite go to number one, it stops just shy of it, but that's fine. And it's tightened up. Um, on this type of uh, adjustable, you can adjust without taking the top loose. Uh, we just recently ta talked about this. The, the Gillette's and the T2, you have to open up a little bit to do the adjustment because the adjustment mechanism is different. All right, stop the rambling. 16 minutes, Heiko, come on now. All right, here's the shave. 
first stroke. How is it? Is it going to be too aggressive? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. So, first impressions. Pointy corners, I can feel that from a mile away, but it's not super duper aggressive, but it has enough efficiency, so there's actually some shaving going on here. You can hear it. Oh my goodness, this is this is good. This is a good number one. This is the number one that you want. So it's it's safe for a beginner. They could pick up one of those and start at a number one and then over the next few years work up their way to you know number six. This is good. This is smooth. And we have talked about this before as well, that if you have like a stainless steel razor, like the 6S Rockwell, that the bead blasted surface on some of those models could be a little draggy, so it pulls your skin. This machine surface here, I mean, it's not shiny, polished shiny, but it doesn't drag. It is slick enough. So your mileage may vary again. This is a adjustable razor at number one for my experience level. And I'm not the most experienced shaver out there, but to the experience level that I have worked my way up, this feels fairly comfortable. I can comfortably pick this up with a sharp blade in it and Wilkinson sword is up there. It's not a feather, but it's, it's relatively sharp. And it's made in Germany. That I can shave with this. And I could see myself using one of those early in the morning. The blade alignment with those um, ribs instead of just pins. So it doesn't have a round pin that locates the blade. But like those strips that stick out. Very well located. And... Uh, Oh yeah, someone was complaining about me always saying, oh yeah, we're going to do a two pass and then it turns into a four pass. I hear you guys. I hear you guys. I take you seriously. I'm not joking. Um, this one here is really not so much how many passes we can do or how much um, passes we need to do to get a smooth shave out of it. I just wanted to try it because I want to I wanna ultimately get to the comparison of the, the final cut and the Ultima to see how they stack up against each other because they're so similar. They're made by the same company, but then from what I'm reading and what I'm hearing from other people, they are so different. Uh, maybe they just designed it slightly different or because of the machining constraints or whatever, um, that they turn out to be like completely three different razors. One is cast, one is machined brass, and the other one is machined stainless. So... I feel pretty comfortable with this here at setting one and it did already. I mean, this is only a one day growth here. I just did a shave yesterday. Um, but you know, when JR sent me this box full of goodies, oh, don't want to forget. He also gifted me a pack of Persona Platinum. I will use those. And then a Barista and Man. This is the full measure of man soap. Oof. And uh, it's it's a very like a earthy, leathery, tobacco-y uh, soap and the matching aftershave. And that has actually almost like a spicy scent to it, like a peppery scent. And I will try it out, but not today. Like I always say, when we do a new razor, I got to use something that is familiar. So I'm I'm giving the, the razor the best chance it has. And this one here does really, you know, it's really good. So... <sighs> I'm afraid I might have to sell my stainless steel to someone who likes aggressive razors and then get myself a brass one. This is working really well. So my next video after this one here, I will most likely look at the console. And then after that, I will do a comparison three razors against each other. Not like for the sake of shaving, but for the sake of comparing. 
and this one here is already you know it's it's really hard to do all this from memory because the the last shave with the ult, uh, correction with the final cut it's been a while and the, even the ultima has already been a few weeks and the ultima was a little too you know aggressive for my taste that's why i haven't even touched it again it scared me <laughs> i don't know is that is that true was that the conclusion of my video i don't remember some some youtube shavers are so great to remember what they said about a product two years ago i'm, I'm terrible at that all right on a setting one it is mild enough to be comfortable but efficient enough to actually get something going here and that's what i stick with this this cuts the stubbles down so we are now at the end of pass number two of course i didn't get every little stubble that sticks out and you know to get it perfectly smooth which is not the the purpose of this video here today but just to see initial impressions and how it feels like out of the gate it it's great i i didn't cut myself in two passes and we're like 98 percent there so i'm not gonna have smooth shave yay clap 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 but this is a really efficient but mild razor at setting one and the rest goes up from there you know it would be pointless for me to now crank it up to three and then tell you oh yeah it's yeah i'm at three now <laughs> not even that terrible honestly just reduce the pressure and have respect that's all you got to do yeah the number three i can still <laughs> shave with this thing <laughs> yeah how about a number six? <laughs> oh, I'm going to hurt myself. I'm going to go to six. I'm not going to go to seven and a half, okay? It, the scale only goes from one to six. It just goes a little past the point here. Let's just, let's just a quick, like a couple passes. I just want to see how massively aggressive this gets. I mean, it only lowers down the close comb. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, it's... You know there is more blade exposure there's like the edge of the blade is like hanging out there white in the open and it immediately finds some stubbles that i didn't cut earlier but it's not scary it's you know have some respect so we're done i'm gonna wash off uh put some aftershave on and all that and then we're gonna close out this video so let's rinse off real quick All right, guys, Parasso Green might not be the slickest soap out there, but it works for me. So let's find my, oh, I put myself a little, um, like a two level spice rack, a spinning spice rack. Oh, here's my Parasso. And I reorganized everything that I have sitting here just to appease the wife. So it's not like all over the countertop. And here's some Parasso Green. Mm-hmm, good. So two passes down on my neck, all the bits and pieces here, even shaving with a setting number six, we don't have any major irritation. It might be still irritated from yesterday because if, if I really do a three pass shave every 24 hours, it might get a little much for the skin. But uh, this razor isn't, isn't too wild. It's not too aggressive for a, you know, early in the morning for a daily use, a daily a guy like me who wants to be clean shaven every day you know so jr man i really appreciate this you let me try out some of those really you know quality heirloom quality razors i mean this is yaki and it's you know significantly less expensive than you know the rex console here but this is some fancy stuff this is some nice stuff which i always have to you know justify am i really going to buy this and if i'm going to buy this do i have to sell it off to 
then be able to uh, afford the next razor for the next video. Um, and then I always end up liking it so much that, you know, that's that's just a fraction of my collection. The rest is down under my sink here in, in little drawers. Um, it's just, you, you can't give them away anymore. They are cast members. So here, like the DE5 $50 razor, this is a great razor. But, you know, you can't shave enough to have them in a constant rotation but when we get to comparison videos i have to have something to compare it to and now because of jr i'm able to compare these two together and i'm gonna compare it against this one and then ultimately i have all those other reviews out of the pro flexi the open comb the t2 you know uh what I, the 6s the progresses the you know my two progress you gotta have two. The trend goes to the second progress. You have to have two. I have a shorty and a long one. Okay. And then who knows what the future holds. But this one here is really high up on my likability scale. If they would have done, if they would have done the rounded off ends like Rex Supply Company does, where they take off the edge here and round it off, they would have done this to this thing. Ooh, it would be, this would be, whew, another couple points up my likability scale you know if if the ultima stainless steel which i found a little bit too aggressive to start with if you know if this would have been a notch milder i would have taken it to my uh belt sander and rounded off the edges and then polished it up again i would customize this just to you know all right yaki if you see this if you ever want to bring out a version two of this one i like it but get rid of those pointy edges just that's just me. All right, guys, I, I'm rambling. Um, so to start with this very good first impression, we're gonna work out through. Uh, we're gonna work our way through. Use the Rex console in the next one, and then we're gonna get back to this one and compare it to the Yaki family of adjustables. Okay. All right, you guys hang in there. I will see you on the next one. Don't forget to thumbs up. That really helps. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel. See ya.